it is Saturday. You've got Nicole and Jose here from Heavenly Acres Farm. And we are out doing some running around. We just actually left a good friend of ours, another gardening friend, Robin, from Southern Latitudes. She's got a great channel, lots of gardening knowledge, so check her out. We just stopped by there and saw what she's been growing, um, seeing her garden updates live and in person. And then we also dropped off, we gifted her a treadmill, which was really fun. It's nice to be able to give some of the stuff that we're not taking with us away to people that can use them. So that was really nice. I love doing stuff like that. Um, and it helps us out because now we don't have to worry about what we're going to do with it. <laughs> right, babe? That's right. <laughs> So we are now on the road and we are headed to Funky Chicken Farm. So, <laughs> earlier this week, I, was, I got to thinking and I was like, you know, it'd be nice to have, well, it's been for a while now, but it was, I was thinking it'd be nice to have some white eggs in our marriage. Yep. And I came across a group on Facebook, uh, pretty close to where we're at, Funky Chicken Farms is selling um, grown chickens or young chickens that are ready for a coop. Um, and I was like, wow, and they had white leg ones. Um, which, if you know about chicken breed, they're, they lay a lot of eggs and they lay white eggs, large white eggs. So I was like asking Nicole if she was interested <laughs> in going to a funky chicken farm with me to pick some um, chickens up. Yeah, he goes, babe, you gonna go with me to get some new chickens? And I was like, is that even a question? <laughs> of course I'm going to go with you to get new chickens. Don't have to ask me twice. I also want to get a couple more condoms. Yeah. So, you know, diversifying the flock even more, getting some white egg layers. Um, so, yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun. A nice little Saturday trip for us to another side of town. We got the crate in the back. So, we often use the dog crate to move our chickens or to house them until they're ready to go out with the rest of the flock. So that's what we're doing. So we're really excited about that. I can't wait to see what kind of chickens they have there. They've got a lot of different breeds. And I did want to go by there and have, you know also check them out because they do other things besides just chicken. Um, and I've been talking to a lot of friends, some of you guys, um, about chick, you know, owning chickens and raising your own chickens. And this is another option for you guys to be able to have chicken and not start from uh, brooding them in the beginning, right? Because that also, there's more cost involved with that. Mm -hmm. And you can own chicken that are already, already laying eggs, which is, which is great. And you can skip that whole process. This is just another option to make it easier for you guys to be raising chicken. Yep. <laughs> yep. Good morning. So tell us your name and a little bit about what you do here. Hi, I'm Suzanne Richmond. I own and operate Funky Chicken Farm along with my partner, Andrew. He raises the poultry and we do all types of poultry, turkeys, geese, guineas, quail, chickens, egg layers, and then I raise meat rabbits, pet rabbits, and red wiggler composting worms. And we also have a farm stand and we source from other local farms for our meats and our eggs, our honey, and then I make a number of products. Oh wow, that is wonderful. How long have you guys been doing Funky Chicken Farm? Um, we've been doing this since 2007. Oh wow, yeah, so a long time. We're doing it a while now. Yes. Um, you know, it's a lot of hard work and thankfully, currently we have a two really good helpers that are helping us out. Well, I can definitely show yeah, you Yeah, absolutely. I do all the tie dye. Oh, those are beautiful. Uh, so, this, this beginning of our farm stand. Here I've got um, amaryllis bulbs. These are the reds. I grow arugula. Oh, we love arugula. Oh, that's really good. Try a piece of that. And it's so different than what you get in the store. Oh, yeah. Like, the store stuff has no flavor. No. Wait till you try And you that. love arugula. You do. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's good. I make all the soaps. I, um, I sell wholesale all my products that I make to uh, other local farms, such as um, Webb's Honey, Shack Groves, Indian River Bee Company. Awesome. That is awesome soap. How much is the honey? Um, orange blossom is 16 each okay. and the wildflower is 12 each. Okay. Also do a full orange marmalade. I do a strawberry jalapeno, but I'm like, oh. sold out last weekend. I bet. <laughs> Gotta make more. I'm doing a wild fermentation class next weekend. Oh, wonderful. Uh, this covers how to ferment, you know, 
Uh, I, I love the ferment. Same. Uh, from goat cheat. Okay, so you know the deal. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> we love fermenting. Totally. So I do a power garden. Uh, I like growing in containers mm -hmm. than growing in the ground, although I do have a row back there that I'm trying this year. This is so inventive. I love this. Yeah, these all came from Aldi. <laughs> Wow. Two years ago, they didn't have them this past year, or the ones that they had were like, they were broken in the store. They were so crappy. Oh, yeah. What a good affordable option. Yeah, totally. So I have it on an oscillating automatic sprinkler. Okay. You know, I think if you can automate your watering on a farm, you're like oh my leaps gosh. and bounds ahead of yourself. Yeah, so I like to grow seedlings. Um, here in our zone, we can grow cherry tomatoes all year long, mm -hmm. really. So I got a lot of cherry tomatoes started, but I also like the heirloom beef steaks. So, yes. you know, these are growing and they will be available in approximately two to three weeks. For, oh, wonderful. You know, if you want to look through there, these are, um, I raise meat rabbits, uh, New Zealand white, okay. Californian whites, and also the chinchilla grays. I also raised some pet breeds, such as the lion head you just passed. And um, that's a beautiful rabbit. They're all available for backyard farms. Our mission here is to supply backyard farmers with something small that they can grow, right? Uh, and harvest. The benefit of having a rabbit is really the manure. If you're an organic gardener, it's key in Florida that you create your own compost. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it because we live on a sandbar, and our right temperature and humidity is so high that there's so many organisms consuming that compost it goes poof yep. over the yeah. summer and you got to start all over again high inputs all the time and rabbit poop it's ready made right ready you don't made. have to let it ready to go yeah. into your garden it's not a hot manure it's a cool manure mm -hmm. and so i take all the manure that's collected here on the bottom yep. and i feed it to the worms which are located in the bins behind you oh, and okay. also across the way yeah you got your worm farm She's gorgeous. She's a pure breed lion head. Oh my gosh. Hi. Right. These are so pretty. Yeah, this is the, we're what talking about the guys? rabbit tree. They're doing some filming. Yeah, these are all my mothers. Everyone with a box has babies in it currently Aww. right now. I've got 62 young ones. <laughs> that I don't know where I'm going to put when they're six weeks of age. <laughs> <laughs> but um, hopefully... Um, you know, they're going to be grown somehow, mm -hmm. or other people will purchase them. Uh, usually, the, some people who want to raise backyard rabbits purchase a trio, two girls and a boy. Okay. That way they can start their process mm. uh, and start collecting the manure, and then hopefully get red wiggler composting worms. Yes. Which are in here. Right there, <laughs> yeah. You know, they're the ones that do a lot of work on the farm mm -hmm. uh, in making soil. And this is the best soil that can possibly be made. Yes. What, how do you, if you can describe the taste of rabbit. I, I would say that it's a uh, very similar texture to chicken breast. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a white meat like chicken breast, oh, okay. all of it. Uh, and the flavor is mi a little milder. Sometimes chicken breast can have a sulfury flavor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rabbit doesn't have that. And so it goes very well. And for instance, a hunter stew is a very popular dish or hassan pfeffer. Italians love to do rabbit and you don't want to do anything that will overpower its flavor, but a nice mushroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gravy with potatoes and carrots and celery is always lovely. <laughs> you can set this up in your backyard mm -hmm. and you're going to be so much more productive. Yes. Uh, as in food. And yeah, I think I people that. think that it has to be so complicated and it's not. It's, it's not so easy and it's as simple as you make it. Correct, you know, and um, you really I feed and water the worms once a week. It's summertime, maybe twice a week, you know, yeah. because it's just hotter. But really, all the w rabbits are on automatic watering systems. I do feed them by hand every day, but I need to check them each day, yeah. too. So that's not a problem. I mean, I've lived here all my life. I built my house when I was 24. My grandfather bought the property in 1943. Me, my mom, and my sister live on these 10 acres, and it's always been my mission to grow food, really. That's wonderful. I've always wanted a worm farm, and now I have. Yes, <laughs> now you have a huge one. <laughs> I got a big worm farm. It might even be bigger next year. <laughs> There's a wonderful book of by a beekeeper that talks about increasing your hives mm -hmm. you know multiplying them out but you can do that with any farm animal yes 
and um, your your initial input can be very reasonable mm -hmm. but over time it does take time and patience but you can definitely <laughs> amazingly increase very quickly yeah we recently just started selling our extra eggs to locals um, friends Excellent. that are in the area and the chickens are starting to pay for themselves which Excellent. is nice that's hey we're happy if we're breaking even <laughs> exactly do you guys want to see our chickens our new chickens take a look there's no chickens in there <laughs> so we actually didn't get chickens and we're going to explain that to you now all right friends so we are back home and we're in our florida room and we are we figured we would chat with you guys about the experience at funky chicken farm and why we didn't get chickens uh, while we're up potting a bunch of our seedlings for the last round of growing here in florida so Her. yeah so i'm going to be filling pots and jose is going to be grabbing plants and we will just chat with you guys we didn't end up getting chickens because it was suggested that we didn't honestly um you guys, Edgar was a wealth of information. So you guys saw the footage with Suzanne previously. We didn't film any with Andrew, who is her partner at Funky Chicken Farm. No particular reason. We just I just set the camera down and then we started talking. But Andrew shared so much good information with us about chickens. He's been raising all kinds of birds for a long time. And, you know, he asked what we were interested in. And you were interested in which type? Um, and I was looking at white la egg layers. And they mentioned they had white leghorns, which mm -hmm. are a good producer of white large eggs. Um, so that's what we're going to go take a look at. So after talking to Andrew, he mentioned, you know, he asked us for, for the reasons why we wanted to get chickens. And we told him we had an existing flock. And um, we just wanted to add different eggs to our to our layers. Well, actually, when we as soon as we asked if they had the white leghorns left he was like oh no i took those to the the auction he's like i'm actually going to lose money on them but i took them to the auction nobody ever wants those and then we're like oh no well, we you know that's what we came here for and he's like to be honest i i hope to never have those chickens here again he's like he does not like that breed he said they're just very flighty um and that there's other good like better breeds for white eggs so that's kind of how the whole thing started yeah and you know to each their own um right I was looking at white leghorns because they're an abundant producer of white large eggs. They produce, on average, about three fifty a year. Yeah. Um, so they're, I mean, they're just, just FYI, um, these are the egg layers that normally you get the eggs from in grocery stores, like commercial farms, like commercial farms, and they were bred to produce a lot mm -hmm. of eggs. And that's what he said they're really good for is if you want to be an egg producer so that's what andrew started out telling us was about the white leghorns and then um we were walking around with him and looking at some of the chickens and he you know just shared a bunch of information like knowledge that he's learned over the years with us and basically said if you know bo it boiled down to if we add a couple chickens to our flock now that our egg production is going to drastically decrease for a period of time. That it's pretty disruptive to a flock to introduce new chickens. Um, so unless there's really a purpose for it, or unless we're adding a bunch of chickens um, and rotating chickens out, you really don't want to just like disrupt your flock like that to add a chicken or two just to get another color in there. And I thought that was very helpful information. Yeah, that was actually pretty good information. I uh, And you know what? We agreed. We were like, let's not do this right now. Um, the chickens will later move to Tennessee. Um, and we'll leave them in Tennessee with Nicole. Uh, and at that point, we will add a couple birds then. I think that's a good time to add birds. Um, and then the next time we add birds won't be until we start rotating our flock. Yeah. So, I mean, he was like, hey, I'll, I mean, if you want chickens, I'll sell you chickens. But I just want to give you all the information so that you can make an educated decision for yourselves. And we really appreciated that. So we ended up 
agreeing that we don't think it's it's the right time we don't want to disrupt the flock we have a pretty good market right now for our eggs um, so much so that you know we're pretty much breaking even and selling out of our eggs every week which is such a blessing so we really don't want to disrupt the flock and we don't want to disrupt that production and we figure it's going to disrupt the flock when we move them to Tennessee, like Jose was saying. So why not introduce new birds at that time? So we'll get them moved up there and we'll introduce new birds like right away. So that'll be when we pick out some more varieties based on egg color, based on production, and then add those into the flock. Yep. <laughs> yep. Totally agree with <laughs> One of the things that we also wanted to share and explain, Jose had Sorry, touched I'm on. Sorry, I'm gonna cut in right here, honey. Can you film a little bit less now? Because oh. I'm gonna plant some other bigger ones. And okay, yeah. I think this is a bit too much. Okay, sorry. I felt them too much. <laughs> you see me keep throwing dirt out. Oh, no, I'm just talking. <laughs> so, what I was saying. What was I saying? Oh, uh, benefit. Okay. So, we, Jose touched on this in the car, and we wanted to to go into it a little bit further for anyone that doesn't have chickens yet that wants chickens and anyone that doesn't want 18 chickens um not that we have 18 but anyone that doesn't want a ton of chickens you can only keep a couple in your backyard because most people can have a couple backyard chickens so this is the way to do it you, if you go to say tractor supply or a local um, farm supply store you're not going to be able to buy one chick. You're not going to be able to buy two chicks most often. Typically the minimum is going to be four or five. At Tractor Supply it's four. Now you can get different breeds mixed together but you have to get four. So if four is already too much for you and it might be just based on your size, your like your size yard space or what your city regulations allow, you can't you can't even buy from Tractor Supply. If you go online to purchase chicks you gotta normally buy a minimum of 10, 15, or 20. Like we wanna get guineas, I have to buy a minimum of 20. We got chicks and that was a minimum, we, we got our meat birds recently and I think that was a minimum of 20 per breed. And that's per breed, you can only get one breed, you can't mix and match. So it's really not, it doesn't make sense for someone who wants to only raise a few chickens for eggs in their backyard to purchase from either of those places. So finding a local farm like Funky Chicken Farm that has different varieties and will sell you one chicken that's already either fully grown and ready to produce eggs or close to being grown that's a juvenile that's out of the stage where you have to brood them which means raise them from a chick in a brooder with special equipment and all of those inputs you can buy that one chicken and yeah maybe it's 20 25 30 dollars they range from 15 to normally 30 depending on what breed and how old but that cost is still better than all the costs that you're going to incur buying the chicks and then buying all the starter stuff for the chicks including like a brooder space all the material for bedding all the feed the light the heat lamp all of that plus your time so if you only need two or three chickens this is the way to go is to go to a local farm like this and get two or three chickens that are almost there and ready to start laying um so we just thought that was a really good option and we wanted to make sure we explained that to you guys because it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people to buy the large amount of chickens like we have um or buy the extra equipment or spend that time like she, she also said right i mean this actually will save you money yeah and like we did it that way and got the brooder stuff because we knew that the end goal was to continue to grow out chickens and to continue to get new chickens and get meat birds and eventually raise our own chicks from eggs that our flock is is hatching um so we knew that was the end goal but that doesn't make sense for a lot of people living in the suburbs that, that again can only keep one or two chickens and then in two or three years when those chickens are done, they can buy one or two more. They're not going to be like raising up a bunch. Um, so I think that's a really it's good... It's a great option. Yeah. And it was a really good point that Jose brought up. So we wanted to make sure that we explained that. You know, and with that said, it's, I think, believe it's also a great idea for us to provide that service in the future. Don't know yet, but, you know, it would be a good option for some of our friends that want to start mm -hmm. um, raising chicken for us to be able to have that available. So... I am the slowest at doing up potting. I take my time 
I like I don't like tearing them apart. Well, that's um, a my, good thing. Nicole does that all the time. No, I don't. I feel bad when I even have to split them apart. It hurts. Oh boy. One of the other tips that Andrew gave us that I thought was really good, and again, you may not be able to do this if you can only have a few chickens, whether that's regulation or your your just your backyard constraints or just desire. But he basically said you want to think of it as per person. You want two chickens in order to get, you know, eggs. So the okay. So I'm trying to think how to explain this. So in order to get eggs for each person, say two eggs a day, you want to allot two chickens per person plus 20% more. But the idea is to have an extra chicken really per person because every chicken's not going to lay every day um, for most of the breeds. So you need, if us, if we want to ensure we get four eggs per day, we can't just have four chickens. We need to probably have six. We have 18 and, and we get anywhere from 12 to 15 eggs per day. So you don't get one egg per chicken per day and they're not gonna lay every day all year long. Um, they're gonna go through times where they're not laying. So. so that was our experience at Funky Chicken Farm up in Melbourne, Florida, and it was so wonderful. We loved talking with Suzanne and Andrew. They were very generous with their time showing us around um, if you're in Brevard County, Florida or close by and you want to go check them out, definitely check them out. They have a whole bunch of um, other products and things that they make, things that they source from other local farms. What are some of the things that we bought, babe? So we bought some honey. Mm -hmm. And we also bought, so she said that some of her family members, cousins, they grow wild hog. Grow out wild hog, yeah. So we, uh, we actually purchased some wild hog from them. We did. We purchased a ham. Um, that we're really excited about. We're going to do that with some of our collards tomorrow. Um, so we got that and then we got two different types of local raw unfiltered honey, which was really great. We we love using honey. I use it in, we've been putting it in our coffee. Um, we use it for, I use for oatmeal and tea, but we love local unfiltered raw honey. It's a good immune booster and good for allergies. All right, guys, so that is going to do it for our Funky Chicken Farm video today. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you have the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We really, really appreciate every single subscriber. We've been getting quite a few new ones recently, and we send so much love to every subscriber. We really appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank you very much. Yep. We um, have a lot of really exciting stuff coming up. I know I keep saying that, but it is true. So stay tuned because two, basically two weeks from now, we're going to Tennessee for a week, which is really exciting. Yeah. And then I will be up there starting seeds and I have a few renovation projects, little renovation projects I'm gonna share with you guys. And we get our first round of meat birds. So that's exciting. You're going to have fun over there with those meatbirds. I don't know how you're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to have 50 chicks to take care of by myself, along and with thousands of seedlings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why we're kind of up potty this yeah. so that we can get rid of all the plants that we have here, which, by the way, look how oh, yeah, because we're doing. This needs to go yeah. with me as well. Um, and we're just, for this first round, I'm not starting anything for the tunnels yet, right? I'm going to start the tunnel stuff, but I'm, you're going to have the conversation with... Yeah, I'm starting the kitchen garden stuff and the green stock stuff and all of the herb and flower garden stuff for the front area. So that's a lot. Some of it, yeah, right? Yeah. we can't put anything outside till May. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm starting any of that stuff, any of the stuff that goes in either of those spaces on a schedule. I have that... Um, the schedule that I shared with you guys, that uh, spreadsheet. So I will be following that because only some stuff needs started right away. So obviously I'm going to be going based off of that schedule. I'm not just like willy-nilly planting everything. Like you usually do? No. Look, where's all this commentary coming from, guys? I don't know. All right. So <laughs> that's it for us today. We will see you in the next one.